Today, we have the very first look at the brand new Longines Majetic. Welcome back to Time and the Rest at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always, and today is an exciting day for us in the studio because Longines actually sent us out this press sample before the watch is released. It is the brand new Longines Majetic, which should be released in about two weeks from us recording this video. Now, interestingly enough, back in 1935, this watch actually came in at 40 millimeters. However, with this new incarnation of this watch, it comes in at 43 millimeters. So it's been made slightly bigger and a little bit more chunky. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel for a while and you guys know me, you'll know that I actually prefer smaller watches and that's because I've got slimmer wrists. I'm a bit of a skinnier guy. However, I can understand why they've upped the, the size of this watch because if you think about being a pilot, you need to read the time at a glance very, very clearly. And if you make the dial bigger, well then you're gonna be able to read the time quicker. And now let's get to the actual thickness of this watch because that says a lot about the wearability of a watch. Now, typically diving watches come in at around about 13 millimeters because they go to 300 meters of water resistance. My guess is that this will be slightly under, but because it has that kind of domed sapphire crystal glass, I think that that'll push it up a little bit. My guess is 12.5, but let's have, let's have a little gander here. This comes in at 12.9 to 13 millimeters in diameter. So it's a little bit more chunky than I actually thought. And now let's get this on the scales and see how much it weighs and then compare it to the Amiga Seamaster that I have on at the moment. Now, the reason that we like to do this is because of how new these watches are. I know that a lot of you guys haven't tried this on yet, but I know that a lot of you will have tried on the Amiga Seamaster. So it gives a kind of good comparison there. So this comes in at 113 grams, but bear in mind that this is a sample piece without a real movement. It has a kind of dummy movement in it at the moment. Um, so it might be slightly heavier. I'd go for 116 grams. My Amiga Seamaster, uh, this is with the NATO strap. It's not with a leather strap like, like this. Comes in at 104 grams, which is quite interesting. And I think the reasoning behind that partially is that the Amiga Seamaster has an open case back, whereas this has a closed case back. So that is all metal and it's making it that little bit heavier. Now, when you actually look at the face of this watch, there is a lot of metal. The strap on this watch is kind of a vintage leather strap, which plays into that classic theme of, you know, World War II when it was first released in, in 1935, and also the pilot's theme, because a lot of pilot's watches have brown leather straps. Now, personally, and you guys will know this already, brown leather straps aren't for me. I've never really had an affiliation to them. The only watch that I have that has one is the first watch that I ever got. And that's because my parents gave me it. So I feel like it's more sentimental than I actually love the style of it, if that makes any sense. However, this watch does come with a khaki green strap. Now, this NATO strap is actually, it's right here actually. So this is the strap that it comes with and I'll show you it uh, in a bit more detail on the camera, but I can say from experience that this is the strap that I would put on this model. It looks so good. And now we get into the interesting, the interesting thing about this watch. And I said that directly into the mic because it's kind of very unique as a watch because of this. But before we go into that, it's only right that we talk about the brand new Chisholm Hunter watch box that is now available for you to buy on Chisholm Hunter's website. So head to chismhunter.co.uk if you wanna get your hands on those. Or if you like the look of this Longines, Chisholm Hunter are actually authorized retailers of Longines watches. And it's only right that we plug them because this is, it's not the Harrison channel, it's the Chisholm Hunter channel. The case of the watch is, of course, what I was talking about. It is so, so distinctive. Now, of course, it comes in full stainless steel and it has a closed case back. The closed case back has some text on it, um, which just describes the watch and the brand of the watch and the family of the watch. But the case itself, the frontal case, is so, so unique. You would not be able to confuse this watch with anything else because it doesn't look like anything else. It is its own thing, its own person. It's, um, it's pretty cool. It has a combination of polished and brushed steel. Now the polished steel kind of accentuates that, I'd say cushion cut case. It kind of looks like a cushion cut case. And um, 
it looks pretty handsome with that polished around it because it reflects light and gives you some contrast to the brush. Now on the right hand side, you have crown guards that are protecting that screw down crown, which gives this watch a water resistance of 100 meters. And then you get to the creme to the creme, the, the unique point on this watch, the bezel. The bezel is actually integrated into the dial so that when you spin the notched bezel, you're actually spinning a little arrow within the dial. Now, whether you love it or hate it, you can't deny that that is very unique and very just cool. It's pure watch nerdery, and I do quite like the fact that it is watch nerdery. However, however, it would frustrate me a little bit because it is a bi-directional rotating bezel. So if you were to knock it one way or another, it would be slightly off axis. Now that would just frustrate me a wee bit because I quite like everything being uniform in line and symmetrical. So it would kind of get me there. However, it doesn't take away from the coolness aspect. You know, after looking at this bezel a little bit longer, after looking at this kind of integrated bezel, I'm growing to like it that little bit more. Let me explain. This watch is a pilot's watch. It's a military watch at its core. You guys know that, we know this. And when you move the bezel, you're moving that little arrow. Now, it slots perfectly on top of the minute hand. This is used for pilots. This, this, the purpose of this is for pilots, it's not for divers. So when pilots are going from one destination to the other, they need to time how long it takes them to get there in order to keep track of their fuel, or at least back in World War II, World War I, this is what they had to do. So it would be very easy for me to say, for example, it's quarter past five at the moment, move the arrow slightly into the middle, leave it there, leave it on my wrist, and in 10 minutes I can check that and I know exactly how much time has passed and how much fuel I've used. An example of this is actually in the movie Dunkirk. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this, but um, there's a pilot, Tom Hardy, who's in a dogfight. His fuel gauge gets knocked out and he needs to keep writing down the time so that he can keep an eye on his fuel gauge or, or how much fuel he has because he doesn't know how much fuel he has because the fuel gauge hasn't been knocked out. If you had this watch, you wouldn't have to do that because you'd, you'd know exactly how much time has passed because you would have set the arrow to when the fuel gauge got knocked out. Just a roundabout way of saying, I think it's pretty cool. Cool functionality. Anyway, I've been I've been rambling about that for, for far too long. Let's get into the dial of this watch. So the dial is what you would expect from a pilot's watch. It's big, it's bold, it's bright, it's easily readable. And that is a key point within this watch. It is easy to use, easy to read. That is a pilot's watch watch at its core. So you have the markers around the outside, which are numerical. So you've got 12, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. You can kind of work that one out for yourself. And these are in a kind of beige tanned color, which gives it a real vintage aesthetic and is a throwback to the original piece. The dial itself is matte black and that makes those tanned hands and indices or numerals stand out that little bit more. It's very simplistic, it's very much a pilot's watch. At the six o'clock mark, you have the seconds counter. So there's no seconds hand on this watch, so to speak. It's more of a seconds counter at the six o'clock mark, which is a little bit smaller. Now this makes the dial that little bit more clean and more easy to read for pilots because they're not distracted by the seconds hand um, and they can look at this at a glance and tell exactly what time it is without confusing the seconds hand for the minute hand. If you look above that six o'clock second dial, you will see at the 12 or just below the 12 o'clock mark, the Longines logo. Now what, I've, what I like about this Longines logo is the fact that they haven't put the hourglass below it, the kind of uh, Longines hourglass that you guys, we all know and love, but it just gives it more of a vintage aesthetic, more of a stylized approach. And just on a minimal note, I love the font that they've used. And on that note, before we get this on the wrist and before we talk about the movement, let's look at the loom that is in this watch. Now, as you can see here, the loom shines extremely bright green in the dark and it kind of plays into that pilot's theme. You know, it's easy to read in the dark, it's easy to read in the light. It is a pilot's watch at its core. And at long last, we get on to the movement of this watch. And I think for the money, that's that's where Longines really shines through. They have quality movements for an affordable price. But anyway, I'll stop rambling. Let's get to the movement. The movement on this watch is the exclusive Longines L893.6 caliber. This, of course, is fully in-house to Longines and is equipped with a magnetically resistant silicon balance spring. 
and also it has a 72 hour power reserve. As well as this, this watch is actually COSC certified. So it has COSC certification, which is very, very good for a watch at this price. I'll get onto the price in a second. I wish I could go more in depth with the movement. I wish I could uh, talk about it a little bit more, but this watch is still a sample watch. And unfortunately, there's just not much information on the movement. However, when this watch does come out, we will do a more in-depth review. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like these kind of reviews. All in all, for this package, it comes in at 3,000 400 pounds. But you need to remember for that money, you do get quite a lot. It's a fully functional pilot's watch with an in-house movement, which is exclusive to Longines. It has a silicon balance spring. It comes with three straps, another leather one, and also the NATO, which I would put on it. So it does come with quite a lot of, of stuff, shall we say. And it is quite a big package. I have to say though, it's a little bit too big for me. I don't think I could pull off a 43 mil watch. It's just too chunky, but Having said that, if they brought this out in a 40 mil variant, I think that I would probably wear it. I would wear it as more of a field watch, of more of a outdoorsy watch when I'm climbing the Monroes that I climb and uh, the hills that I climb or going diving, you know, whatever I'm doing, that's maybe where I would wear this watch. I don't fly planes, so it wouldn't be, you know, a pilot's watch, but yeah, that's the use case that I would get out of this model. I think it is a cool model, but I also think that this is a cool magazine. Chisholm Hunter have literally just released their new um, magazine for 2023 and it's awesome. There's so many cool watch brands in this magazine. So if you're coming into store, just grab one, have a wee look, have a wee nosy. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you didn't, just hit the subscribe button a little bit more aggressively and um, I'll be back in two days.